All right, welcome to a um, long-awaited video. This is the three-year tasting of a bulk versus bottle-aged mead. Now, oh. I only have one more of these bottles in okay. supply. So it's gonna probably be a four-year, at the four-year mark, or five-year mark. But um, this is the pear, fenugreek, and cilantro mead that I submitted to a competition. Um, this was your first competition yeah. submission, right? I just, okay. I'm freaking. I'm, I'm remembering this now. Yeah, it is. What what accounted for the cilantro? What? How did um, you come to that? Just dumb brain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you spun a wheel or threw a dart. No, you're, you're this doing was all before sorts. Can It Be a Mead. This okay. was before the. Honestly, this was probably my first step into the dumb outrageousness. This no, this was after the peppermint. So I think I dipped my toes in the water of dumb. With the peppermint. I mean, I think the peppermint eventually turned out oh, great. It did. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> well, here we go. So uh, this is BC from Doing the Most. I'm sure most of you are familiar with him. If not, please go check out his YouTube channel. He, of course, has a mead making channel, um, and he is doing the same stuff as me, but better. So oh, go, go and check him out and, and Don't support say him. That. <laughs> I appreciate that, but so. This test is uh, simple. We're gonna pour both of them. I have pour, uh, pulled a portion of the bulk carboy and put it into here. Oh, so it's still in bulk. It's still in bulk. Okay, I just, that's I pretty literally cool. pulled a small sample okay. off. Too much behind the scenes. This Let's guy. go and start pouring and um, tasting. I'm excited about this because I have seen the online propaganda about fenugreek. Mm. And I've been thinking like, maybe I should, maybe I should try that out. And it's nice that I'm going to get to see what a fenugreek this flavored is, mead tastes like after several years. I don't know that I'm years. it justice um, by any means. Because this is the first time I've used it and I made it to a tea. So, who knows. How exciting. Alright, okay. so, so this uh, is right hand is the bulk aged. Bulk and aged, the aged. left hand is okay. the bottle aged. And are, are we tasting for anything specific here? Yeah, I, I think just in general. I don't I don't know. Okay. I have not heard any rumors that like, you know, this pops out over time. And that's kind of, I don't know that there's a lot of research on yeah. it necessarily. I mean, it's just, the, the idea is consistency, right? Yeah. Bottle to bottle. Right. And obviously, you know, if I had six bottles of these lined up and we were going back mm -hmm. and forth, mm -hmm. that'd be a different story. But this is more... From a single bottle to a bulk, okay. is there a difference? Who knows? Okay. So let's get some aromas on each. It does smell like maple. <laughs> it does. And that's, that's what the online propaganda yes. is. For those of you who may be wondering, is that you should not even use maple syrup if making an Acer Glen. You should just use fenugreek. <laughs> it does have that. It does present it the aroma. It smells like maple. It's, it's nice. It is smooth. You know what it kind of reminds me of is um, when you get like maple flavored bacon that's <laughs> yeah. that maple smell yeah oh man i don't want to call it like an artificial maple smell but it's it's a bold mm -hmm. smell i do like the aroma on this it's very very round mm -hmm. um and that cilantro in there um as he i kind of pitched the idea and said hey cilantro is in yeah. this and he was like oh man and <laughs> i don't I, like I, cilantro well and i said you know that ultimately ultimately the cilantro was like probably something that faded off and has faded off but we'll find yeah. out Okay. All right. Oh, this is nice. It's it smells like something I might enjoy. Interesting. Okay. So left hand, we're on the the bottle aged. That's very. It is different. Different. This one has almost like a caramel, uh huh, toasty kind of thing going on that th is somewhat absent from this one. And this yes, this feels uh, uh flat. I'm mm -hmm. not getting a lot mm -hmm. of honestly aroma from it it's like i'm having to push really hard yeah. to get the aroma yeah. to come out i'm with you i'm having to kind of <laughs> and i poured more that's what's interesting i poured way more in the of the bottle and that mapley note that fennel note doesn't float on top of this as much i as, do feel like the one. the pear is popping out a little bit more the fruitiness of the pear mm. is than than this this is more mapley in that kind of warm yeah, maple syrup the acid on the nose is more prominent in this one yeah which I think probably accounts for that fruity. All right. Hmm. Well. Okay. Let's um. Let's start with let's start with the bottle. Okay. okay. It's very smooth. It's very smooth. Age has been kind. <laughs> there's a there's a bold tannin here though. I didn't add anything. I didn't add any oak. I didn't add any. I mean, maybe the tea, the fenugreek tea itself, mm -hmm. has presented some tannin. Yeah. I didn't adjust. For anything, there's a tannin that it does. It's, it it's right on the the front of your tongue. 
Like it's gritty, but not in a bad way. In like a, like it's it's putting down roots a little bit. Uh huh. I wouldn't say that they're for me. Um, I don't even know what it is. Of course, there's not a, a, a identifiable pear punch in the face. No. Cilantro no. is like I don't even think it's like no, apparent. Like taste. it's it's gone, and I don't, I don't recall it being prominent in the first place. So it probably aged out. No, if this was palate expanders and you gave this to me, I would tell you that this is an Acer Glen. Yeah. Like I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little bit bought in on on the hype now, <laughs> but I'm converting you in lots of things. Tonight <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> there is a slight juiciness in here. There though. is, yes. It's the the um, that you're presenting the tannin, but that's I do feel like the pear juice itself. I don't. I'll say this: I'm the carboy is so dark, and I have yet to <laughs> slosh it around because yeah. I don't want to oxygenate. That I don't know how much. Stuff's at the bottom of it. It is like very hard to see how much is at the bottom of the carboy. Yeah, I mean so they're they're clear. It could be a chance that like this is aging with like a, a small amount of lees or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, it's 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 really pleasant. Yeah. Okay. That's hmm. okay. So let's flip gears. We're on the bulk aged. Very similar. Yeah. The nose is different, but I. This one I think is a bit juicier. There's a bit more, I don't think I could tell you what fruit was in here if I didn't know, right. but I would think that it was some kind of apple juice mm -hmm. adjacent base. It's really just presenting more um, malic acid profile mm -hmm. to that. It's not really adding fruit flavoring, I would say. I think that if I had to like rate them on smoothness, I think this one's slightly smoother. I think it goes down just a little bit easier. And I think that might be that I'm, I'm detecting a little bit less tannin here than I was there. Yeah. But they're very similar. Like, I don't know that I could pass an AB or a triangle test with these. I almost, hmm, I'm having to, I'm, I mean, here you're, you're comment about the body difference. But I almost wonder if this one's more juicy. I'm trying to the 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 bottle aged. Bottle. Yeah, I personally I feel like to me the the bottle aged has a little more um, thin of thin body to it. I don't know. It's they're but they're very, close though. It they're is, very similar. We're kind of towing the line between. I just I feel like this one's easier to drink, which maybe I'm interpreting as juicier or fruitier. Uh, I just yeah. think it goes down just slightly smoother. Like if this one on a scale was like a five, this one's like a four and a half. Yeah. They're not like vastly different. They are, they are very similar. And then we're kind of really nitpicking. We're pulling this thing mm -hmm. apart. Mm -hmm. uh, but they the, are different. For, for good reason though. I mean, this is a, a big, big test for a lot yeah. of people. I would say that um, with them being so similar, some of the most important things for anybody who's debating, should I bulk age versus bottle age? Of course you talk consistency, but mm -hmm. from bottle to bottle, um, obviously, you know, if you bottle 32 wine bottles or something, you gotta go store them. If you can't store them in the same spot, you know, your closet one might taste different than your, your whatever bedroom one, than yeah. your <laughs> one that's in your mead room. So trying to have a consistent bottle to bottle thing. But then also, um, I mean, factoring in space, that's always something that comes up <laughs> yeah. with, with bulk aging. I think everybody wants to be able to just let something set, but um, as, as you have talked about tonight, you cannot always let something just right. uh, set forever. Right. Be nice. Oh, it's interesting. So, yeah. as, as it's breathing more, I get that cellar, uh, cellar, uh, cilantro. Do like, you? It's like, it's hitting me in my like upper palate, and it's presenting itself like a little bit of a celery-ish, ish, like, taste like when your mouth dries out mm -hmm. it's kind of weird these have really a lot a lot of tannin because my mouth is very dry now were these stabilized yeah <clears throat> i don't want to add to the natural mead making mythos but i okay. have heard that sorbates can present as celery after a couple of years um I will say that there is a video coming out and it has not come out that um, uh, talks about the use of sorbates and sulfites um, and, and that myth in general. And I will say that I have uh, noticed different things, not necessarily I've, those things. 
Of course, my my test I'm referring to is only a year, so maybe uh, two or three years presents different. I don't things. know. I don't really taste it in here, so I can't. It was more it. so like it kind of hit me. I can't corroborate that. So I don't know. I I've enjoyed getting to do this, and I really <laughs> it's gonna be fun to do this at four years, or maybe even be patient enough to let it set for five. Um, so uh, that that carboy has actually sat like in the same location on the same Untouched. shelf for. Two and a half years. That's cool. So, I mean, there are differences. Yes, there are. There, they're not stark, but there are differences. And really, de depends on how what you're aging on. You know, in this bottle, I tried to get zero lees. So theoretically, there is zero sediment. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. in bulk aging, uh, unless you rack and rack and rack and rack, you're going to have a small amount of sediment. Um, so. Then you're you're aging on sediment. Who knows what happens when that happens? So uh, ultimately, do it the best way you can. If you mm -hmm. need to bottle age, then do it. If you can, let a carboy set for a long time. It's also it also works well. You know, I've seen a lot of people talking about doing bulk aging in kegs now mm. because they're thinner. Mm. They're airtight. You can purge them with CO two. Yeah. And uh, you can stack them. You can stack them on their side if you want to. And so it's a thing that I'm like, yeah. oh, I had never considered that. Yeah. But that's not bad. Because then that's an when you're ready to drink it, you literally just put a little bit of pressure on yeah. and you can get some off. And then you got CO2 on top. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad idea. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. I might be bought in on that. I'm just, you know, my whole world is <laughs> changing of, tonight. Wallow keg. Yeah, just, <laughs> I'm changing the set you dressings out. You get a picnic tap and you're just going from little, it's like a plug-in. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let me just uh, fill her up. <laughs> so, all right, know, maybe. BC, thank you for uh, being a part of this taste test. Um, obviously, this this is not done. This is something that will happen again in a couple of years or next year. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know what you think down below. Have you done this? I, I haven't seen many people who have mm -mm. done a lot of testing like this. So be curious to see. Go check out BC's channel if you would like to see even more great mead content and alcohol content in general or in non-alcoholic content too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we even did some We're of just, that. You got everything over there. We might do a roast at some point. <laughs> so. This is this is this has been fun. Thank you for the opportunity yeah. to be a part of this. Not it's not every day you get to try a three year old mead. Mm -hmm. Just you know, as a matter of chance. So. I think especially in this circumstance of yeah. like A versus B. So, yeah. and I'll, I will gladly take the AB spot. You can keep the BC spot, so. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>